HashiCorp Terraform is officially version 1.0 as of today. That's what I'm going to be talking about today on Terraform Tuesdays. That's right, everybody. Announced at HashiConf EU 2021, Terraform has officially hit version 1.0, generally available. Very exciting stuff. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Before I get into that, just two quick things. One, if you haven't checked it out yet, I do have a podcast called Day 2 Cloud that I do with Ethan Banks. It's an excellent podcast that deals with the challenges of cloud practitioners in our modern cloudy era. And we really do try to break through the marketing BS and get down to how people are actually using the systems that are out there. The other thing I want to mention is I have my Terraform certification guide. I'm going to be updating it for 1.0 very shortly. So if you're interested in getting the Terraform associate certification, definitely check out that certification guide. Links to the podcast and the certification guide are down in the description. All right, without with that out of the way, let's talk about version 1.0. I don't want to rain on anybody's parade here, but if you're looking for advanced, new, incredible features, some whiz-bang new service or something with version 1.0, you're going to be disappointed because you know what's new about version 1.0? Nothing. There is nothing new in version 1.0. In fact, you could really just think of version 1.0 as an extension of the previous current release, which was 0.15.5. This is kind of like 15.6, let's say, in terms of the actual changes. What version 1.0 actually is, is an, an acknowledgement by HashiCorp that they've hit the four pillars that they set out for themselves before any of their products hit 1.0. Terraform has achieved those four key pillars, and because of that, it has now been updated to version 1.0. And with that comes some changes in terms of policy and future roadmap, but there's not any new features. So if you started watching this video and you're like, man, new features, 1.0, no, that's it's not gonna be that. But there is definitely more to the story. Before we get into that, I just wanna give a little bit of background on Terraform as a product in general. And there's a really awesome timeline that the team over at HashiCorp and Kyle Ruddy put together. So I will definitely link to that, but I wanna walk through a little bit of the actual timeline of Terraform and my personal timeline with Terraform. Terraform was conceived of back in the early 2010s and version 0.1 actually was released in 2014. That was the very first version of it. Now, I was not aware of Terraform at the time, but it did subsequently level up in releases. And by the time I was aware of it, I believe it was in 0.7. This was late 2015. And I read a blog post by Scott Lowe, probably based off a tweet or something, that was talking about infrastructure as code. This was very important to me because I had started working on a lot of cloud projects where I was using stuff like ARM templates and CloudFormation. So I was familiar with the concepts of IAC and I suspected there was probably a better way to do it and Terraform immediately seemed like that thing. So I got hooked in from that blog post. In 2016, I started using Terraform for some of my consulting projects, initially just to build out the infrastructure, and then that was it. And then later on, actually using the state on an ongoing basis to roll upgrades to that infrastructure. But initially it was really, hey, here's a way to get things built and I can use the same tool regardless of which cloud I'm working on. Well, really Azure and AWS at the time. In 2017, in August, I published my first course on Pluralsight, and it was getting started with Terraform. And that course has done very well over the last four years. Seriously, it's it's usually in the top 50 courses overall in Pluralsight. And I think that speaks more to the hunger that people have to learn more about Terraform rather than the fact that I'm some amazing trainer. I, th I think I do a good job, but I really think people want to know and they go to Pluralsight to know. So that was 2017. Uh, let's see. That was 0.9 at the time. And then some big changes came in 0.10 where they unbundled providers. 
And also in 2017, they introduced the Terraform registry where you could download providers and modules online and Terraform Enterprise was launched. And that put a GUI and some other features and workflows on top of Terraform. But initially it was only available to those who were willing to pay a, a decent chunk of money for it. So it wasn't the sort of thing that Joe Average was going to get into. Fast forward to 2019, they introduced Terraform Cloud, which was essentially Terraform Enterprise, but now it was available to everyone and they had a free tier so you could get into Terraform Cloud and try out some of the features that previously were only in Terraform Enterprise. It also brought with it the release of 0.12, which changed a lot about how Terraform functions at the uh, core layer and also introduced HCL2. So you can see we're building up to something that's more stable, more easy to use, and has a clear roadmap for how it's going to develop. I also updated my Pluralsight course in 2019 because of all the changes in 0.12 that really necessitated a full update of the course. I'm probably going to be doing another full update of the course later this year to hit the 1.0 mark because some significant things have changed again. Now, what does this all mean with the 1.0 release? As I mentioned, HashiCorp has four main pillars for deciding whether or not something should be 1.0. Let's talk about what those pillars are. HashiCorp has four pillars for deciding whether or not something is 1.0 worthy. And the first one that they have is, is it deployed broadly? Now, obviously Terraform hits the mark on that. Terraform is used broadly by thousands of companies to build infrastructure. It's got millions of downloads. No problem, that, that mark is checked. But that actually brings up some issues because it's been popular for so long, it's gonna bring up some issues in the later pillars. So the next one is major use cases are understood and supported. For the most part, that, that has been true for a while. The major use cases, probably starting in 0 0.12 to 0 0.13, were very well understood, and the workflows surrounding them were pretty well understood. So I think that one checks off. The third one is a well-defined user experience. When it comes to the CLI, it was very well-defined, and you had a pretty well-defined workflow of init to plan to apply to destroy. But Terraform Cloud introduced some additional layers on that workflow, and they had to figure that all out before it could really be considered 1.0 because Terraform Cloud is very much part of the product. And number four, it is technical architecture is mature and stable. Now, I'm not saying that Terraform wasn't stable. It certainly was. But the larger thing was because it was so widely adopted for a long time, there were a lot of components that needed to be updated, removed, refactored about the underlying core engine that drives Terraform. And so the Terraform engineering team did a ton of work starting in 0 0.12. I mean, before then, but really starting in 0 0.12 and moving forward, advancing towards this 1.0 goal. And they had some things that they absolutely needed to announce were going to be deprecated way back in like 0 0.13 in order to get to the 1.0 release. They needed to say it was gonna be deprecated and then remind you it was gonna be deprecated and then actually remove the thing. <laughs> so a lot of work went on there. And that's really the last major milestone they had to hit was stabilizing Terraform to the point where you could upgrade without fear. And there were no breaking changes when you moved from 1.0 you know, to 1.1. That's There shouldn't be any breaking changes, just new features and bug fixes. So that's where they needed to get to. And with this newest release, they feel that things have stabilized enough that we're now in 1.0 territory. So here's the stuff that they've done in 1.0. With the release of Terraform 1.0, there's a few things that have changed. And these aren't new features. These are just changes and promises, if you will. In terms of Terraform state, this has been a contentious thing. If you upgraded your version of Terraform and didn't apply and it updated the state file or the state data, an older version of Terraform traditionally couldn't work with that state anymore. And that was like, if you went from 0.10.1 to 0.10.2, you couldn't use 10.1 anymore. That was a frustrating experience for a lot of people. What they did is now state is going to be interoperable 
for dot 14, dot 15, and 1.0. Dot They're going to keep it interoperable across all of those versions. Now I'm assuming, you know, maybe dot 14 will drop off the map when 2.0 comes out, but the idea is if you have different versions of Terraform working against the same state, that's okay as long as they're dot 14 through 1.0. Okay. The other thing is there's a remote data source that hooks into the state that you can query to get information about another configuration. Again, that can be a little dicey depending on, you know, if this configuration was deployed with 0.11 and this configuration was deployed with 0.14, like which one is one going to be able to query the other? The way that they've lined it up now is anything dot 12 or newer is able to query the data source of a state file from any other version dot 12 or newer. So that means if you have one configuration using dot 12, another one dot 13 and another one 1.0, one they'll all be able to investigate each's uh, state data as a data source. That's very useful for interoperability. Upgrade experience. That's another big one. There will be now no workflow changes when you upgrade to a newer, newer version. The workflow that init, plan, and apply, and destroy are going to stay exactly the same as it moves up in versions to 1.1, 1.2. Nothing is going to break until potentially 2.0, but that's way ahead in the roadmap. The other thing is no major refactoring or tool changes will be necessary when you upgrade from 1.0 to 1.1, let's say. They're keeping it on a very even keel. In terms of maintenance periods, 1.0. X is going to be supported for 18 months. If you're running Terraform 1.0, you know that will be supported and bug fixes will be investigated for the next 18 months at least. So that's very important from a maintenance standpoint, especially for organizations that don't like to jump to new versions all the time. The last thing is that they're retiring the old SDK that's used to create providers. There was a version one and a version two. If you're a provider using version one, that's now deprecated. You got to move to version two. But the good news is the version two provider or SDK is much better. So that's a win for you. It's, it's work for you, but it's also a win. So I guess you have to take it both ways. All right. So that's everything that is done in 1.0. What does it mean if you're upgrading? That's a good question. Let's address that. If you're planning to upgrade from a previous version of Terraform to 1.0, what is the guidance right now? Well, the good news is if you're already on a .15 release, it's not really an upgrade. Like I said, it's really just an extension of the .15 lineage. So if you're already on .15, it's not really an upgrade. You're good to go. If you're on .14, just read the upgrade guide for going to .15. If you're on something older than that, the recommendation is to step yourself up from whatever version you're on now to the version after that until you get to dot 15 or 1.0 and look through the upgrade guides for each of those subsequent upgrades. Do you have to do that? Maybe not. If you have a test bed, test out the upgrade. But if you are making a big jump from something like dot 12 to 1.0, there might be dragons there. So just, you know, be careful. If I had to bottom line things, it's basically version 1.0 is all about stability. It's saying Terraform is now a stable platform with a well-defined roadmap, and we're going to make some promises about what's going to change and what's going to stay the same. And they actually wrote up a whole compatibility promise document, which while I will include down in the description, that defines all the things that are not going to change as long as we're in version 1.x. So that's important to know. The next bottom line thing to understand is that this is simply an extension of the 0.15 lineage. So if you're already on 0.15, you can upgrade without any fear. And the last thing to understand is that there will be no new features introduced until 1.1 comes out. Anything that's in the 1.0.x release train is all going to be bug fixes. So that's what you need to know about the version 1.0 release in a nutshell. Lastly, I want to say congratulations to the entire Terraform team and especially the engineering team over at HashiCorp. You've done an amazing job, especially with something that's very challenging. There's 
thousands and thousands of people already using your product. And now you have to make these incremental changes to get it to 1.0. So like, well done for you. Also, big congratulations to the community and all the community contributors that contribute to the open source project of Terraform. Congratulations. You helped to get past this finish line. So well done to you as well. And that is all I have for Terraform Tuesday. Isn't it wild that they chose to release version 1.0 on a Tuesday? It's almost like it's like they know about this Terraform Tuesday thing. Maybe they do. Maybe they just love tacos. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, uh, subscribing to the channel is very much appreciated. Sharing is also appreciated. If you're the kind of person who likes supporting people's stuff with Patreon, I do have a Patreon. You can be one of the fine folks that's up on the screen right now, or you could support at the $2 single taco level, which gets you the weekly newsletter and early access to this video. So if that's of interest to you. Check out the link down in the description. That'll do it for me for today. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. So, um, patrons, I know I said this week's was going to be about Boundary OIDC, and that was a little, that was a little fib because I knew that 1.0 was coming out, and I knew that's what the video was going to be about, but I wasn't allowed to say because it was embargoed. So that was a little red herring in the newsletter. If you're a patron, you, you saw that. So my apologies for lying to you. I won't do it again. But like, I couldn't say what the video was actually going to be about. So I'm very excited. 1.0. Whee!